Okay. Good evening, everyone. Having a great time, I hope. Yeah. yeah, like the energy is low. We want to keep it up. How are you doing now? Are you having fun? No, I don't think you are, so I need you to keep up. Are you having fun? Is the weather great? Alhamdulillah. Thank God it didn't rain yet. Alhamdulillah. I'm so happy to have everybody here today. We've been having amazing discussions on the big now so far. And what is more big now than where we are standing here today? Does anybody know what is the place called? Where are we? Some of you don't seem very sure. Where are we? Okay, there's multiple answers. Let's try again. Okay, everybody knows. Where are we right now? Yes, great job, everybody. So we are absolutely excited to have this wonderful session called From Brooklyn to Bijeri, where this wonderful event is being held right now. And I am more than thrilled to introduce myself. My name is Amani al Khiami, and I'm a global program manager at the MISC Foundation. Myself and my team, uh, all of us from MISC, have worked really hard to bring a wonderful theme to you and also have a wonderful speaker come up with us right now. Mr. Jerry Anzarello, please welcome him to the stage. Mr. Anzarello is the CEO, group CEO of Dar'iya Gate Company. Please, I would love to have you join with me here today. Thank you so much. Salam alaikum, everyone. No, I need you guys to be more energetic. Salam alaikum. Yes, amazing. So we've been having a wonderful event today. Yes, thank you. Wonderful weather here in Dar'iya. Yes, uh, we praise the Crown Prince for that as well. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for being with us here today and also for being such a gracious host uh, for us in the, for the Miss Global Forum. Uh, I think we had a wonderful conversation with you earlier today that the way we came up with the theme and we thought the best way to position the theme is the big now is about having young people in the present. Absolutely. On the ground of the past and seeing all this development is seeing the future. And there's no other location that would have worked better than Bajeri for this. So thank you so much for being no, with us No, thank today. you. It's a great honor. Great honor indeed. Yes. So, sir, we've talked about maybe in the backstage a little bit about, since our title is From Brooklyn to Bajeri, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey coming from Brooklyn all the way to Bajeri, Daraiya, Saudi Arabia. Well, my first obligation as a Bedouin from Brooklyn is... Um, to start by praising and giving our love and blessing to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman, because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Tereif, the UNESCO World Heritage Site, we wouldn't have Dereya. And then I think about the amazing opportunity our dynamic Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, our wonderful Prime Minister, has given me. I've been in tourism, as you know now, uh, over five decades. And uh, people say to me, well, you know, you're working an 80-hour week at, you know, 70 years old. Uh, why do you do this? And I say, because it is such a privilege and an honor to be in the kingdom during this historic time. But what's my favorite part? My favorite part is being around all you young, dynamic people. So from Brooklyn to Bedouin, <laughs> right, Brooklyn to Bajeri, what happens is, Anybody that gets up to my age, you realize how fast it went by, right? You, you come out, you're ambitious, you have dreams for the future. But you know what we realize? It doesn't matter if you're born in Brooklyn. It doesn't matter if you're born in Paris or if you're born in Riyadh. What it matters is the big word. And you know what the big word is? Humanity. We have a collective obligation to each other, right? There's a saying that I love from the musician Sting, and he says, we may not share the same ideology, but we share the same biology. And, you know, there's another saying I love, it's a universal saying, that you stand on the shoulder of giants. How could you sit in this audience and listen to His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman and not be moved? For me, he's a giant. 
uh, Dr. Badr Abada. To me, he's a giant. He's much younger, but uh, to me, he's a giant. Because to lead and encourage and empower and inspire you young leaders now, I say all the time, the number one thing that drives me in the morning is young, fired up people that believe in themselves, that have the work ethic. You, you praise the crown prince. I don't know anyone in a 50-year career that's worked harder than him because he sees the future. To have passion. The crown prince will say, when I was young, my father, the king, taught me, surround yourself with passionate people like you, like the audience, and a belief in a singular vision of 2030. So what I say to all the young people, you are my energy, and you, you make me who I am so I can serve today at the birthplace of the kingdom. So Brooklyn is only a starting point mm -hmm. on a journey that we all have collectively, which is humanity. Amazing, and thank you so much for that really heart heartfelt uh, answer. I'm really interested, you show me backstage, and if I may call you Abu Helena, uh, Abu Helena, you showed me a wonderful picture in, 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 uh, when we were prepping, and you showed me a picture of what it looked like, used to look like, that I used to look like, in 1998, I believe, uh, and what it looks like right now. Can you tell us like, how the transformation happened? Yeah, you, you're very polite, delightful. There was someone next to us that when they saw the picture of 1998 and Denea, they said, oh, you had some hair. <laughs> uh, maybe one or two things have changed since, but it's 25 years later. You know, I've been, I've been blessed in a long career because the one thing that's carried me for 50 years is the nobility of service. Now, there's two words in Latin that I don't care for, and I hope you don't care for them either. But whoever came up with the word subservient, I don't know where they came up with that word. In my world, if you serve, you're not less than people. If you serve, you are the energy source. It's nobility. You know, may Allah accept all your good deeds. May Allah accept all your good intentions. Allah will always reward those who serve, right? This is a very important thing, especially, especially for, for young people. So when I came in 1998, I, I've always been blessed with Saudi friends. And I said, wow, uh, my Saudi friends, one of my friends lived in Derea. That's why I knew it. And then I said, this is the birthplace of the kingdom? You're in a gorgeous oasis, the Wadi Hanifa, a city made out of mud. But I felt it was the home of Al Saud. It was the source of all Saudi pride. It's the identity of our nation. So if you give me the honor, thank you, Your Royal Highness, to serve on behalf of the Saudis, to come and learn what I've learned, to inspire wonderful young people like you, to be the next generation. Okay, it's not the Quran, it's Buddhism, but there's a saying in Buddhism, to each generation they are born anew. So the future is here, but the future is now. That's why I love big and now, because you're all ready. This crown prince will need thousands, if not 100,000 leaders. You know who they are? All of you. You're sitting in this room right now. You are the leaders. So you must dream big. You must know that this is one of the only countries in the world. The Gulf right now is going through a renaissance. Our beloved friends from Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, Emirates, Oman, we're going through a renaissance. And you as young people are our leaders now. You inspire us. You're much better prepared than we ever were. So God bless you. God bless this kingdom. And I want to really give great credit and praise to the Crown Prince for allowing me the opportunity in my career to serve the kingdom during this time. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is absolutely wonderful to hear. And I know everyone, I think everyone in the crowd is just so moved by that. And you talked a little bit, you know, when backstage, but also here, you know, how do you stay humble? I saw a flock of, of fans come up to you and everybody wants to take your picture and everybody wants to say hi. But you show such grace with talking to, you know, the, the population, with talking to young people. Tell us a little bit about 
that, that leadership with humble, humbleness and empathy. Uh, very sentimentally, His Royal Highness Prince of Aziz got sentimental. I'll have a moment. <laughs> uh, to me, in my world, there is science, but I think all good things that have happened to me have come from a simple act of kindness. Every morning I wake up, I say, Dear God, Allah, please direct me in a direction where I can serve in your honor. Every night I go to bed, I hope I did well in your honor. But you have to pass that on to the, to the next generation. This is what humanity is about. This is what, si the word civilization, nobody uses it anymore. It, civilization is an obligation for all of us to be civil to one another, to see our goodness. And then the other thing is that, isn't it great? You know, if you take a pin and you, you prick your finger and you prick your finger, it's the same blood. Yeah. But isn't it beautiful that we dance differently, sing differently, cook differently, dress differently? So you know what happened with COVID? People got stuck in their homes. You know what they missed? Human interaction. You know, everybody's talking about AI. I'm all for AI. But when you go and travel, you want to feel where you are. You know, and now Saudi Arabia, a country of rich history, the Gulf. I think the Gulf in the next 10 years is going to go through such a renaissance. We're not going to have any problem attracting 100 million visits, 200 million visits to the Gulf because people want authenticity, but they want the warm, good-hearted spirit that's here in Saudi and in, in all the Gulf nations. I absolutely love that. And maybe tell the audience, you know, a story that resonates for, with you on that kindness of being here in Dar'iyah, here in Bijeri. What are some of the things that kind of stuck out to you that was phenomenal or different? Well, this is fun for me because, you know, sometimes in a long career, you don't get um, the serendipity of what we have here. You, here you have authenticity. You have the birthplace of the kingdom. You have the ancestral home of Al Saud. You have the source of national identity, the source of national pride, right? Now, in my career, I had Atlantis. We had to make that up. You know, a lot of times in my career, Las Vegas, Miami, I had to make stuff up. I don't have to make anything up here. <laughs> it's all here. So this is to be celebrated, right? And for me to be a privilege, and one of the things that allows you to remain humble is that you count your blessings every day. And you know what you realize? The steps you walk in, someone walked before you, and you, it's your obligation to make sure that those that walk in, you, in your steps, like Prince Abdullah Aziz said, honor your steps. So we have an obligation to honor those behind uh, the, that, that we came to, and we have an obligation to prepare all the youth that, that they take this planet, this world, our values, our humanity, and, and, and transfer it generationally to generation. That is absolutely true. Thank you so much for that. I've seen, speaking of young people, I've seen quite a lot of people walk up to you and do this. And you showed me a picture with you, with His Royal Highness, uh, also doing this. So can you tell us what does this mean? Yes, you know, when I came here, um, when I met His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, he was so sincere, powerful, but he didn't project his power on me. He projected his sincerity on me. When I met the custodian of the Thule Mosque, I saw a man who was a genuine father before he was a king. You know, a father to me, to all of us, a father to a nation. I saw that the crown prince, I saw that the crown prince had that magic in his eyes. He could see the future and he was prepared to work to create the future for all his people, not just for a select group of people. So what, what, what happens now <coughs> is that we did one because from the moment I knew in Vision 2030, we were gonna have talent, but there were gonna be elements that we needed in the kingdom right now. So in Vision 2030 it says, we will grow our talent, but in divisions where we don't have that expertise, we were not experts in tourism. We were not experts in entertainment. We were not experts in design. We will invite the best and brightest minds from all over the world 
to help us on our mission while we're preparing our own people to fulfill that role, right? So I knew we were gonna have to rely on the best and brightest from around the world to encourage, especially our next generation of great Saudi leaders. So we did that. What does that mean? Each individual is critical to the success of 2030. 2030 is a dream. It is executed by individuals, and everybody is equal. The crown prince is equal to the person who sweeps the floor. I'm not talking vision, I'm talking humanity. So everybody's individual. We're one family at Didea. In our success, we rejoice. The crown prince will be the first to say, we're gonna make mistakes. We'll learn from our mistakes, but when we make mistakes, it's not this. We're united as one family, we stick together. There's only one Dedea. It's the birthplace of the kingdom. So we see ourselves as Dedea as the custodians of this treasure. It's priceless Dedea. It's the identity of the kingdom. So that's why we say there's only one Dedea. So for us, it's pride. Amazing. Amazing. That sounds absolutely wonderful. So I hope everyone is taking away that we need to do this after this co conversation. So let's hold off on that. But I want to ask you one last question with the bit of time that we have. And I want to see, you know, you almost through your talk, you're saying each one of us here today and young people who are watching us live or young people who are here with us today, each one of us has a big now within them. They might have not defined it yet, but everybody contributes to the bigger picture. And if you will, can you say a few words on what should young people look to when they're thinking about you know, the future of that idea? What should they think to, to develop themselves and get them ready to make sure that they are the, representing and embodying the big now? Well, thank you. I'm glad they added 10 more minutes on the clock. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I wish they did. Here's what I would say. You know, there's an old saying I don't like that youth is wasted on the young. I don't like that. I think you're powerful when you're young because you're fearless. And I would say you are the captain of the ship. You love your mother, you love your father, you love your teachers, but you determine your happiness. Your passion is your internal fuel. Believe in yourself, believe in the opportunities. Believe that you can make a difference. Now, you may not know where it is now, but if you serve with all your heart, Allah will, will welcome you. You don't have to worry. I have a saying in my family. Man gives awards. Man or woman gives awards. God gives rewards. If you serve with all your heart, you don't have to worry about salary. You don't have to worry about promotion. It will come because people will want to be around you. That's what leadership is. It's inspiring. So to all my young friends who inspire me every day, you are my heroes now. Dream big. Shoot for the stars. N let no one define who you are. You define who you are in the image of yourself. You, your happiness, you're going to live with yourself the rest of your life. You define who you are in the area that makes you happy, yeah. right? Passion drives it. I will always trade one element of intellect or one element of experience for one element of passion. So God bless you. Thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be with Miss, and you are great. Thank you so much. Where, you know, this is, has been an absolutely great conversation. I'm so emotional. I'm actually getting choked up a little bit because we were, you know, planning this idea for quite some time right now to see it really being, we kind of manifested it and we, we made it happen. So we thought big, we acted now. We had you as a wonderful, wonderful speaker with us. We had a wonderful conversation and we have so many more left to come. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you so much. Bedouin from Brooklyn. Everybody, let's kind of raise our hands. There's a photographer. I'm sure there's a photographer somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone.